It's time. We are leaving Bogota. We're going to Medellin today. This guy, we think he might have altitude sickness. Yeah, I'm not feeling good at all. Hey, adventure friends. I just survived the week of hell. A week of misery, a week of pain, where I felt like my head was gonna explode every single day, all night long. And it all started because we went on a pretty fucking sick hike <laughs> through Montserrat. Almost there. Moments away from the top. Yep. Which is pretty cool. We're almost 10,000 feet above sea level, which is kind of crazy. The air's definitely getting thinner up here. Yeah, but I feel amazing. Yeah, we went on this amazing hike and it was crazy, like there were humans everywhere and people were just like bulldozing their way down this mountain. There's like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people, I swear, <laughs> on this mountain. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, that's like, I guess the thing to do on a Sunday is do the big voyage up the mountain. Um, so it was like us and the locals in uh, Bogota, Colombia. And um, yeah, then after that, Brian was so sick. Kind of weird, never felt this way before. Yeah. As per WebMD, I've got quite a few of the symptoms that they have on there, so. I've never seen the guy sick. Usually he's just like Mr. Indestructible, Mr. Smiley Face, which is kind of annoying sometimes. But, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I but do smile a lot. He smiles mm -hmm. nonstop and he always seems happy. Um, because so, I am. Yeah, so when there's something wrong with Brian, well, I figure, I. As I discovered this past week, um, when there's something wrong with Brian, he gets knocked out like a ton of bricks. It was kind of scary. Like he woke up shivering and sweating and yeah. I had never experienced nasty. this before. I mean, the, the climb wasn't that difficult. It was about 2,000 feet of elevation gain. Mm -hmm. uh, we went from about 8,600 feet to just above 10,000 mm -hmm. feet. And, and I smashed it, and he wasn't smashing it, so that was like, well, you were smashing it, yeah. but. And now she leaves me in the dust. <laughs> but he kept being like, seemed more tired than normal completely winded which was surprising to me yeah so physiologically i had no idea what was going on uh because i'm no i'm not afraid of hikes i'm not afraid of climbing a mountain or you know i've been on 14ers like 14,000 feet in colorado before but like what made this hike different, I've got no idea. And besides feeling like crap, it, it kind of makes you feel, you know, useless because I like to go out and go on experiences in all the new cities. Like we just flew from Bogota to Medellin mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Yep. yep. And when we got here, like he was toast. Yep. Um, which was really hard for me to see and to like experience with him because I was like, oh my God, what's wrong with him? We're in another country. Um, it was weird. Uh, a week after the hike, so we hiked the, the hike on a Sunday and then on the next Sunday, uh, we ended up going to the ER here in Medellin. Mm -hmm. It's called Clinica El Rosario. And it's, uh, it's like a huge, huge hospital here that just so happened to be about 1.1 kilometers away from where we're staying in this beautiful area. It's actually the nicest hospital, most clean hospital I've ever seen. It looked like pretty much brand new. And so because it was a beautiful day out, instead of grabbing a cab to go to the hospital, I was like, let's just walk there. So yeah. we walked to the hospital, it was a beautiful day out got checked in within three to four hours uh, three IV bags full of I mean who knows what I looked it up and it was like uh, a couple painkillers and uh, one of them was uh, anti-infection sort of anti systematic yeah uh, but within the first bag of IV uh, I, my headache went away completely my head stopped feeling like it was going to explode how are you feeling Better. 100%. Yeah. That's like, a big percent. That's a huge percent. 
and uh, it's almost like I'm ready to go on another adventure. Almost. Once we fix that. And I was, I looked at Aaron. I was like, "Oh my gosh, it doesn't hurt anymore. It's not hurting. My hair doesn't hurt. My scalp was hurting. My skin was hurting. My my head felt like it was gonna explode, and it didn't hurt anymore. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" So they kept on. Uh, as soon as one bag of IV was gone, they would hook up, hook up the next, and then the next. And then after three to four hours, they came, the nurses came in and they were like, hey, how's it going? I said, I feel great. I went in with about an eight on the pain scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst. And I left with zero on the pain scale. Yep. The next morning, woke up just fine. No headache, no head pressure. I wasn't foggy anymore. I wasn't disoriented. And so the nurses ended up saying that I did have a, a form of altitude sickness yep. of some kind and that that sickness is something that ibuprofen or over-the-counter drugs cannot fix yeah. and so well we figured that because like when we landed in Bogota it's like 8700 feet up yeah. or is where we landed so it was difficult for Brian right off the bat to like go up hills and stuff like that which was really surprising to me because he's really fit and usually like <laughs> stuff like that doesn't bug him no, and usually he's like miles ahead of me. So um, that was kind of surprising right off the bat and then every workout we did um, at our place in Bogota was challenging for both of us. So I kind of wondered if it was lasting so long because he had altitude sickness from like the moment we landed in Bogota, just yeah. like a super, super minor case of it. and. And then hiking up Montserrat just like pushed him over the edge and, and maybe that's why it lasted him so long um, but it, it was about a week of hell for him um, and they say that altitude sickness only lasts for like 24 to 48 hours especially after you go to a lower altitude and it had been longer than that so i didn't want to push him because neither one of us liked to go to the doctor um we try to like heal ourselves in the most natural way yeah. that we possibly can um but it was getting kind of scary and the symptoms weren't really going away so i did push him to go to the doc and it was a really good idea and i'm so happy that we ended up doing that and the thing about it is like if i get a headache i'm not going to go to the doctor like Oh, my head hurts. Let me go to the doctor. I'm not that type of person that feels like I need to go just because something all of a sudden starts to hurt. Mm. And so it, after, you know, seven days of it, I was like, so okay, much. you know, nothing is getting better. It wasn't getting worse. It just wasn't getting better. And so there had to be something different that like if I kept doing the same thing, it's, it's not getting better. So I've got to try something different. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that kind of goes along with anything really in life. Like if you're in a relationship and you're wanting to, you know, go travel with that person and go experience really cool things and you bring up different ideas for different travels and your partner's like, nah, I don't want to go. Nah, I don't want to go. Then maybe, try a different form of travel try doing something different yeah. but you know getting on the same page and doing something different right yeah, yeah. it's all about um, exploring new options when something's not working I think we really discovered that with this because we had been pushing ourselves so hard and then like whether it was us going out and having an adventure and exploring Bogota at the time or um, editing videos and being up really late and writing blog posts late and just like really pushing ourselves um, harder than normal because we found something that was really working and giving us momentum in our business but then life threw us a curveball and life was like nah -uh, maybe you're pushing too hard maybe you're doing something that isn't right like uh, we weren't taking enough time for ourselves as a couple yeah. um, so things came up for us this past week and gave us some big realizations and helped us understand where we need to reallocate our time and and just really appreciate you know being able to have 
a business online. Because I remember as a hairstylist, when I would call in sick for work, my boss would be like, are you joking me? Like, you've got a full schedule full of clients, not happening. You better be yeah, dying. Yeah, you better be dying. <laughs> like, I don't know how many times the guy said, you better be dying. I'd be like, well, what if I'm bleeding to death? Like, can, <laughs> can I stay home? But no. A lot of times we hear from tons of people all over the world that when they call in sick or there's an emergency in the family or something like that, they have a hard time taking a day off of work which is absurd. So I'm really grateful that we have a business online, that we have the leverage and the flexibility to be able to take this space when we need to. If one of us is down, um, the other one can still do some work, but be able to take care of each other and really just spend that time to get better um, is super important. Yeah, and what's cool about having a business online is like, Whenever you start one, you don't necessarily have to quit your job or anything like that. You can get it started and start growing roots with it. Start, you know, uh, developing your audience. Start uh, having an audience who's engaged with what it is that your message is all about. That creates a cohesive community, and it's yeah. and it's really really neat to see how that grows. It's yeah, if you have something that you want to share with the world, just pick up a camera. You don't have to be perfect at it to get going you just have to get started and sometimes in the early phases of your business you will be still working you will be putting in extra time uh building this thing editing videos That's connecting normal. with people and really starting to get the engine going yeah. totally normal but the really cool thing is once you get your systems in place and you set yourself up it frees up your time so you can take a week off with your love if mm -hmm. they're sick or your kids or whatever um, if or you can just take a holiday um, because you set yourself up with the systems online so the thing works like a fine-tuned machine yeah so if you don't want to ever have to worry about if you go in the dumps like I did mm -hmm. and you know you got to take a week off mm -hmm. and you're able to still be able to do what you want when you want mm -hmm. be where you want Mm -hmm. and all that good stuff yeah. then you should definitely take the tribe for a trial yeah. uh, we can show you whether or not your idea is uh, potentially profitable and if there's actually money in something that you're thinking about because there's some really cool ways of, of checking that out mm -hmm. and we would love to help you with that in the exclusive tribe for entrepreneurs yeah so if you haven't yet go ahead subscribe hit that bell so you can be notified every monday wednesday and friday internet permitted when we come out with new videos just for you and until next time friends adventure on adventure on let's live bye right now we're looking at the yellow belly bandit which is one of our favorite little birdies he's a cute little birdie he's Sweet got bird. he's got like yellow on his belly mm -hmm. He's got a white strip across his eyes and then like it's surrounded by black strips and then like brown wings. It's a very cute bird. Super cute bird. <laughs> you recognize his call. <laughs> you love his call. I love his call. He's got a cute little call. Yep. Yep.